Afternoon everybody, Rich here, back for another video for the Diecast F1 review and here today is the Benetton B201 Renault from the 2001 Formula 1 World Championship uh, driven by Jensen Button. Uh, quick rundown of the car, it's the last uh, card we produced under the Benetton name before they changed their name to Renault in uh, 2002. It is the first Renault, or first Benetton to have the Renault engine since uh, 1997 and the car was also a lemon as well. <laughs> it was an awful car. Uh, thanks part well, thanks mainly to the uh, lack of power from their new Renault engine. Uh, not having much uh, luck with the uh, Michelin tyres either. The uh, car really did not work on those tyres. Um, but all in all, the uh, the launch control worked quite well, which was uh, introduced at the I think it was Spanish Grand Prix. Towards the end of the season, the car was pretty fast, but uh, a too little too late for the team. Everyone else had moved forward as well, and the car was still pretty unreliable. Uh, I think 10 points scored throughout the season, uh, 8 of which were by Giancarlo Fittichella, uh with 3rd place in Belgium and 4th place at the German Grand Prix, uh, also a 6th place I think it, in Belgium, uh, not Belgium, uh, Brazil, uh, in Jensen Button in the other car only had a single 5th place, scoring just 2 points, and it's clear to say he was he went from a uh, great rookie to a uh, overpaid grid filler in the space of a year. Um, which is pretty much what he is now at the moment, Nick McLaren. Um, anyway, this is the uh, Benetton B201 or 201, and uh, yeah, the last of the breed, I should say. But uh, overall, not a bad looking car. Uh, the last of the uh, Benetton, like I said, and then we'll just do a quick look around the car, just to zoom out a bit as well. And you see, it is the uh, Jensen Button version, as you can tell by the big letters and saying Jensen on the uh, engine cover there. And uh, a much better looking car than the previous year's uh, Benetton because the, 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 the B201 from 2000 was actually quite an overweight looking car, although performance wise it was a better car. Uh, I found this one much more sleek, or I thought it was much more sleek, it looked pretty sleek, and also I like the nose as well, a much higher nose than its predecessors, also the fancy uh, front wing pillars as well. Uh, just do a quick zoom in on that. I'll quick look at it anyway, so that's the front wing. Uh, the front wing changed throughout the year, um, or later in the year I should say. It went from a uh, angled pillars to a vertical pillars later in the year and uh, didn't really improve the performance much anyway. Um, livery wise it's pretty good. Uh, Mini Champs haven't really done a very good job with the paint on this one as, uh, I should say because uh, looking at the car in real life it did have a very nice glossy bright blue whereas this one is sort of a, a pale blue and it doesn't this doesn't really shine that well it's, it's shiny paint it's metallic but well you know it's, it's painted on but it's it's not like the real Benetton blue but uh, can't complain I could get the paintbrush out and do it myself but I can't be bothered um, overall oh, let me let my monitor over um, not a bad model though there are a few issues with it like the uh, the front wheels don't turn I always turn it around that way if you try to roll it the front wheels won't turn because the, uh, the splitter underneath uh, is a bit low so it does, uh, does scrape the floor a bit so uh, it won't roll but uh, structurally wise the car is pretty sound it is a very well put, put together model it uh, says so nothing going to break off at uh, a first glance not like the later models but it is a very nice model the last of the Mini Champs uh, let's say Benettons or Renaults really because uh, the uh, Mattel took up the license for the uh, Renault uh, license um, they took up the license, I don't know what I'm going to say, uh, they took up the license uh, from 2003 onwards because Revel did, uh, took the license for 2002 uh, for the the, uh, the Renault R, I think it was a 202 they took the license for that year just for the one year and then from 2003 onwards till 2007 uh, Mattel Hot Wheels had the license for the Renault team and then Norev took over in 2008. Um, then eventually Mini Champs took the license back. By the time that happened, uh, Lotus uh, were back in. Oh no, tell a lie. Renault, uh, Mini Champs did produce the uh, R29 as well for the 2009 season, but uh, like this car, it was pretty much a lemon. Um, and then we'll do a review of those ones later on, but uh, get, through, get through this one first. Um, overall, it's not. It's not bad put together. It's a very very sturdy model. I mean, there's no bits that are going to break off just by looking at them. The, the wing rows are on there quite nicely. Um, barge balls as well. They're quite flexy. Uh, the rear wing also quite solid. It's a, it's a solid car. You can't really go wrong with this one. 
Um, just have a quick view around the back because we've got the uh, external exhausts on the top of the bodywork there. We've got the uh, Renault Sport decal on the side there. Try and get as close as I can. Also the big letters in Jensen. Also, if you're going to get the Fizzy Keller version, I can't remember if it says Giancarlo or Fizzy. I can't remember what it said, which uh, isn't very good. <laughs> I can't remember. But uh, never mind. I think the Fizzy Keller version is a sort more sought after version because he had more success in this car. Uh, so I would go for that one. Um, it's got the Marconi on the side there, and also the uh, blue blob on the on the top of the uh, cockpit for the uh, Elf logo there. Blue barge boards. I don't really know why I'm telling you this, you can probably see the colours anyway. Uh, also the first year of the Vodafone sponsorship on the Benetton, or in Formula 1 I should say. Uh, four badges on the front wing, kind of looks out of place, but uh, I think two would have been enough. And also Vodafone on the rear wing as well. Um, I think, I think uh, Eddie Jordan tried to sue them for uh, putting him on the Benetton rather than on, other on his cars, but uh, we should... Uh, it's, uh, Another one of those stories from the past. Pretty much crippled Eddie Jordan at the time. Um, not so much else I can review about this car, really. It's uh, sort of a generic mini chance model, really. It's nothing really special about it. I, I do like this model, it's just nothing special about it. It's, uh, like I said, the last of the Benetton breed. So just have a quick looky underneath. So we've got the uh, Benetton Renault B201 from 2001, as well as the Paul's model art mini chance badge there and all the screw holes as well and the uh, made in China bit as well so yeah it's not a bad model uh, availability of it the model is I won't say it's rare but it's not um, I'll say it's not uh, uh, highly available you can get them and they're not exactly expensive but they don't pop up very often usually you see them on buy it nows for so 60, 70 pounds, which is ridiculous, because really you only want to spend about 15, 20 pounds with this car. It's not particularly sought after, like I said, and it's not particularly rare. It's just another one of those cars that doesn't pop up very often. Um, but yeah, it's not a, not a bad car. It does look good on display. I do have the box for it, and I will. Uh, there's no point in me reviewing the box because I mean, it's. I just get it. It's just another mini chance box you know black with the uh, checkers on it there's nothing special about the box apart from the uh, you have the badge there the Benetton Renault Sport and all that guff apart from that there's nothing special about the box that's why I didn't review it check that back over there but anyway I think I'll probably uh, not bother reviewing boxes in the future because uh, like I said they're pretty much standard for mini champs apart from if we get a, a team edition or something like that um, but yeah, um, not much else I can say about this car really. It's, uh, like I said, not hugely sought after. It's not a brilliant model. Also, it does have its flaws like the, uh, the front wheels, like I pointed out earlier. Although now they're rolling. Well, they were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, also getting a bit dusty as well. It's either the, the dust in the box or I need to polish the desk. But uh, never mind. We'll do a quick look in the cockpit. It's got some nice coloured. Uh, buttons on the steering wheel, nicely detailed, have a look there, you can see that, I think it's on upside down actually, I think the uh, the dial at the top there's meant to be on the bottom, but uh, I'm not entirely sure on that one, also got some buttons on the uh, dashboard as well, also you have a wing mirror that looks like, it looks like it's reflecting something, but uh, now that I've zoomed in you can't bloody see it, anyway, never mind about that, there's a bit of dust on the car, so I think the box leaks a little bit, have a look, through there, got a nice view there, and yeah, not a bad model, not a brilliant model though, but uh, it's certainly not bad. So, uh, performance wise, like I said at the beginning, the car really, really was a lemon. It was one of the better looking cars of the time because 2001 they did have a few rule changes. I think the front wing was slightly higher, uh, which made the nose slightly higher as well because the, uh, the Formula One was starting to go through the area where the keel was being removed underneath because you got the keel. Which is basically where the middle of the uh, uh, wishbones are connected to. You can see this lump in the, underneath the uh, nose there, which that's basically the keel. Formula One was starting to experiment with zero keels, or in Sauber's case, twin keels. Basically, two of those things. Um, of course, with the higher nose, there was less requirement for the keel. I think it was around 2005 when Formula One, uh, when the team started to introduce them properly, the uh, zero keel. 
Um, but as soon as V8 come along, then the keel was removed completely. Um, not much else to say really. Uh, I think what else? What else? Rule changes, but there was the launch control as well for the uh, and traction control. The car was very effective with launch control. It was very quick off the line, but it soon fell back as well throughout the races. And also the Renault engine was the weak link. It just kept blowing up or it was just underpowered. Coming into the first race of the year, both cars were either on the back row or 20th and 21st on the grid. I think. I think it's only Tarso Marquez they managed to out qualify in Australia. Um, but it took them only just two races to get the point but it took Jensen all the way to the German Grand Prix to get his first points and didn't score any after that um, really didn't do his career any good but he, he came back good after 2002 scoring points consistently with the Renault in 2002 and then moving off to BAR um, of course the Benetton name was uh, withdrawn it really was a, a shame for Benetton that year for the, the team name to be withdrawn with such a low uh, or such a poor result. I mean, it's sort of like the Tyrrell team in uh, 2000, uh, 1998 when they were, when they withdrew, or well, not withdrew, but the uh, the name was sold. Um, Tyrrell was pretty much at the bottom and were pretty useless by 1998, and the team bowed out unceremoniously. Um, kind of a sad way for teams to go. It's either bankruptcy or just the names be withdrawn. Kind of like the name Benetton as well. To, uh, it's just just a cool sounding name for a Formula One car, Benetton. But uh, never mind. Now we just have Lotus and uh, things like that. But uh, never mind. Um, but that's all a bit all I've got to say for this review. Uh, I shall upload it soon anyway. Well, pretty no, but it's going to be uploaded anyway. You'll see it. Um, anyway, this is Rich signing off, logging off, and disappearing. And I shall return with another review. Um, review wise, I'll probably be doing the Williams. <clears throat> the Williams FW19. Uh, I do have two of those to review. Both the Mini Chads ones, though, of course. Um, the Villeneuve and Frenson version, I'll re review them soon. Um, but they will be for later on. So this is Rich signing off, logging off, disappearing, like before, and I shall return later on. So uh, bye for now. <laughs>